Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're going to discuss seven things you might want to take to a car boot sale. Now, the first few are very, very obvious. However, the last two are quite unique and different. So you might want to stick around for those last two. So number one is very, very obvious and really it shouldn't even be on this list. However, I have put on this list, I put it on this list because... Um, there is a question I want to address relating to it, and that thing is money. How much money should you take? That is the question I want to address. Now, yes, it's obvious. Yes, I know that everyone is going to want to take money with them, but the question is how much do you take? I've seen this so many times on groups, Facebook groups, reselling groups, um, and people are still unsure about this. A lot of newer resellers, not necessarily more experienced, but... Basically, the question doesn't have a definitive answer. I would say build it up over time. That's the best thing. There might be people watching this video right now who are very experienced, probably more experienced than myself, and who take 500 to a thousand pounds to a car boot sale, believe it or not. But there might be other people watching this video who are just making their start and maybe take 10 to 20 pounds to a car boot sale. And both of you are right. Because the experienced person knows completely what they're looking for. They know what they're after. They're going to get down and dirty right at that car boot sale. They're going to get stuck in and they're going to spend £500 knowing what they're after. The newer reseller, maybe a little bit more inexperienced, will want to take a slightly, well, quite a considerably less amount of money because most of those items they pick up are going to be fails at the first hurdle, you know? So... They'll want to only take a certain amount of money to, money to limit that risk or limit that mistake and then build up the amount of money they're taking over time until they're more comfortable spending those bigger amounts because they're more comfortable in what they're buying. They know that they're not going to make a fail. So, um, yeah, basically, there isn't a definitive answer to that question, but I did want to put it on the list and I did want to just address it slightly. So number two is one that divides opinion a little bit. Now, this is a phone. Should you take a phone to the car boot sale? You'll hear about 60% of people saying, yes, it's great, an amazing tool. And then probably about 40, 45% of people might be saying, mm, well, it can distract you. Although I take a phone to a few boot sales, it, you know, it has distracted me or whatever. There'll be, there'll be divided opinion on this because I've heard it in the groups. I've heard both sides of the story, really. But I think a lot of people do like the phone, do like what it does gives them that ability to search on eBay or Amazon there and then at the car boot and make, make you more money, basically, because you might not have picked it up. But I know there are a lot of people out there who do say it is a big distraction. So a phone, uh, definitely, I would say, in my opinion, yes, take it. But don't you try not to use it as a crutch too much. I'm like that with my phone. Like, I'll use it probably 30% of the time, mainly for Amazon stuff. But with eBay stuff, a lot of the time, I'm just going off gut because I know that that is the way you build knowledge. You, you can build knowledge by looking at your phone and then obviously remembering it over time. And that is one way to build knowledge. But there's nothing quite like going off your gut instinct to, to really remember uh, those good things for next time or those bad things for next time to avoid. So, yeah, phone is another one. Number three, I've put a two-in-one, and that is bags and or a trolley. So it really depends whether you're a granny trolley person or whether you're kind of an Ikea bag person. I'm more of a kind of bag-for-life Ikea bag person. I've tried a granny trolley. I've had it before. I just I find it a little bit clunky, to be fair. Now, I might not have had the best one, uh, the wheels were a bit off and stuff. I don't know. I just find it a little bit clunky. I, I don't like it sort of shackling me to the ground and having to, to you know, move it around and stuff. I like the freedom that the bags have, ha, you know, give me. However, it does kind of come at a cost with the bags because you might not be able to fit as much in them and then you're going back to the car more and you might be missing out. So it really depends on your opinion whether you're a, a bag kind of person or a, a trolley kind of person, but both have their pros and cons, really. So, yeah, obviously that is a big one. Decide where, which one which one you want to go for, whether it's bags or trolleys or rucksacks or whatever it is, and, um, and go with it, really. But that is a big one. You'll need bags, especially as you're 
uh, business is growing and you're getting more and more stock from the car boot. You might even want to take a second pair of hands with you if, if that's the case. Um, number four is a jeweler's loop. Now this is specific to those of you who are maybe looking at antiques or collectibles or maybe you're looking at, uh, not necessarily antiques or collectibles, but action figures that have very, very small uh, imprinted writing on to see what brand it is and stuff like that. Jewelers loops aren't necessarily completely for people who are dealing in antiques and collectibles. It can be for, for other uses as well, you know, just small little bits of writing that you want to see on, on certain toys and stuff like that. So that's definitely worth taking. It's very, very small. They only cost a few quid off eBay. The, the cheap ones are perfectly fine. Whack it in your pocket. There you go. You're fine. So, yeah, jeweler's loop. And, and especially if you are doing more antique stuff, you definitely need one of them. Um, number five is food. Now, the reason I say food is because if you're going there and you're staying for a while, especially if you're selling at the car boot sale one day, Yes, okay, those burgers at those vans, I don't know why, but they are really nice, those burgers at, at the car boot, uh, car boot vans. Um, don't know why it is, maybe it's all the grease, I don't know. But um, basically, why you would want to take food is to stop you spending on those items. So instead of spending five or six pound over the course of the morning at the car boot on those things, on those burgers or soft drinks or whatever it is, take your own food and you'll save a little bit of money that way. Now, it is personal preference. If you want to spend on those food items, then fair enough. But if you don't, if you're a little bit more, uh, I'd say, a bit tight like I am, then, you know, obviously take your own food with you. If you're doing multiple car boot sales, if you're hopping from one to the other to the other, then, yeah, you'd probably definitely want to take food with you. Or, as I say, if you're selling at a car boot. Um, so, yeah, that's number five. Now here comes the two that are a little bit different, they're a little bit outside the box and that maybe some people haven't thought of as much. So number six is business cards. Now I don't do this currently but I do want to get print up some business cards and get doing this. Take a little stack in your pocket, get chatting to people, get talking to people at the car boot, especially like those with house clearance guys, things like that. Get chatting. You've got your business cards in your pocket, they've got your number on, they've got your details on. Whip, whip it out, give it to them, and then you've made yourself a contact. Now, yeah, they might never call you back, but if you do this on volume every week at all these different car boot sales you go into, and you're chatting to people and you're just making friends with them, and they happen to say, oh, I've got more stuff at home or something like that, whip out the business card, just say, look, this is what I do, be quite open with them, I'm a reseller, this is what I do, I'll give you a completely fair price, but if you would like to, then uh, if you'd like to move some stuff on to me, then yeah, I'm always willing to buy. So then, just be very friendly and pass it over, and uh, if you do that on volume, you maybe give out, let's say, 50 cards a month, or 50 cards every couple of months, then out of those 50, even if like, you know, one, well, 2%, 2% would be one person. Even if one person calls you back, the business cards you can get about 500 for about 5 or a tenner, and uh, that'll more than pay for itself, even if one person were to call back. So, um, yeah, and actually say they've got some stuff. So, business cards is a bit of an out there one, but certainly is a good tactic. And number seven is an intangible item. Oh, sorry, I'm just closing this. I've got low battery there. Um, so number seven is an intangible one, and that is have a plan. So what do I mean by that? I mean you should, when you go to a car boot, or before you go to a car boot, think about what you're really after. So let's say you're after video games. If you're after video games, then you're going to have to plan ahead, because you're going to have to get there really early. You're going to have to get there earlier, let's say, than if you just want to stroll around and you're just picking up a few bits and bobs that maybe other dealers aren't as interested in. Um, so if you want video games, you're going to have to get there early, you're going to have to be on it, you're going to have to get your badge, you're going to have to use all these different things I've talked about, and you're going to have to also think, right, where, where do I go in the car boot sale first if I want to get the most stuff? Let, you know, you've got to be a bit, you, you've got to think about it a little bit. You've got to maybe even look at the cars and think, oh, that looks like a more affluent person there. So the chances are they might have better grade stuff. I don't know, but you've got to think about this stuff. So you've got to have a little bit of a plan. Let's say you're not going for video games or something really, really competitive. When you get to the car boot sale, You've got to still think, look, where do I want to start this car boot sale? How do I want to do this? 
How do I want to, do I want to network with people as well? Do I want to be a bit more slow and steady and just have a chat with people and see if I can get any leads that way? Or do I just want to power around, not even really looking or talking to many people and just trying to hoover up as much as I can possibly get? So you've got to have a plan going in. It doesn't have to be a major plan, you know, a big business plan wrote on a wall. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It just has to be a little bit of an idea in your head about what do I want and how can I strategically get the most of that item that I can by doing these different things? Or how can I get the most stuff? Or how can I get the, the most of this particular item? Whatever it is, you've got to have some sort of little idea, a little plan when you go there. So, I mean, it might even be what, fact, what factors into your plan is trying to park closest to the car boot so then you've got more efficiency going back and to the car. It can be anything, it really can. So, the last one is have a little bit of a plan. Know a little bit of what you're doing when you get there or just before you get there. So, yeah, that is the seven things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please do give it a like down below and drop a comment if you would like to. I try and respond to as many comments as I can. And, uh, yeah, I would love to interact with you guys, so do please drop a comment down below. And I will leave it there, guys, and I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys.